So we're going to play it. Um, some of the new factions for this is going to be... Where are they going to be listed out here? Well, we got the bandits. So um, this is a new faction, Yan Bai Ho. Um, I'm going to be playing as him. But there's also... There we go. We got Lu Bu starts with his own faction. And then Sun Sei... There he is. And then Sun Sei is also new. Uh, because they get to start at the new start date of 194. Um, I don't know who else you could play in this. Shh, not Shilibu. Looks like you can play um, the Bandit Queen, Kong Rong, Liu Bei. Okay, so you still have some more options. That's, no, that's neat. Um, but yeah, we're going to be focusing on Yen Ba Ho. Oh, Alwyn, welcome. An existence he will now defend against invaders with steel and rage. So he's going to be the third of the uh, bandits added into this game. I'm glad that the other bandits are in here because the bandits get a new mechanic, which is uh, mercenary treaties. So this is, I, I tried this out before. The mercenary treaty is pretty cool. You have a certain amount of turns to do an objective from some other officer. Like, uh, Cao Cao could send me a mercenary treaty to, like, take territory away from Yuan Shu. Um, and you get paid while you're on this mercenary contract. You're, you immediately declare war if you accept it. And when you take a city from the person you have a contract against, you either have the choice of taking it yourself, or you can gift that land to your mercenary um, contract holder for like a ton of money if you want to. So it's kind of neat that they give the, the bandit factions this little unique mercenary um, feature. I, I, that's, that's pretty cool. And what's also really cool is that the mercenaries are spread out now instead of both of them being in the top of uh, the mountains here. So you can hire mercenaries from you know, the middle map, top of the map, or now down here in, for uh, Yan Bai Ho. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they also have a different texture we'll get into. The um, thing about Yan is that he has this White Tiger Confederation, which is a resource for his faction. And so he is really all about trying to get into coalitions and make allies to make this confederation uh, stronger. So we're going to try and do that as well. His unique troops here. Um, White Tiger Warriors are Splash Attack Axemen, so they're pretty cool. Um, very low armor, though. And then we also have Guerrilla Deployment uh, Raiders here, these archers, which I think are okay. Unique building chain, we have the Shen Yue Camp, which is um, grants food from banditry specifically. Banditry is a new resource in this game, so some buildings will give you money slash like banditry instead of you know peasants or industry. Um, so they get food from banditry that way, and it also increases the bandit network research rate, which is how we're going to get a lot of um, units as this faction. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, we also start with our little brother here, uh, Yan Yu. So we got Big Yan and we got Little Yan, which is pretty cool. Um, so he is a Sentinel, enables stalk as a faction leader. So I believe his retinue, no matter who they are, they can all stalk, which is pretty crazy. Um, when coupled with units that have guerrilla deployment as well. So you just be deploying anywhere and no one is going to be able to see you. So it's a very good kind of ambushing trait. And then also he gets replenishment as well. So let us dive in to this. I believe this is just the trailer. In the shadow of their fathers. What up, Big Dong? Oh! Big Dong got penetrated. But the day will always come. Soon family has a very bad history when with arrows. They must stand alone. And are faced with a choice. Do they follow the path put before them? Or take a different road? Ah, Dao Chan? She's finally in the game. And then the uh, Dao sisters are back there, which is pretty cool. So they're in the game now. I believe, I believe their name is Dao. Or Dao. I like that. am not my father. Adopted father, Lubu. Adopted father. The one you just killed. He had a the couple. Hello, Malinor. Is mine to take. Hello, Dragon Knight. Um, Dresden, no, I'm not, I'm not tired of Niho. It's just that I can now finally stream this. So I wanted to stream this instead of Niho today. 
Weird that there's no music at the end of there. It has been four long years, yet China is no closer to knowing peace. Although the tyrant is dead, hey, thank you, Oscar his successors bicker over the emperor, who remains their captive. Hello, hello. As warlords the land over seek to realize their ambitions, the conflict widens, and the people's suffering continues. Long have you roamed here, Yen Bai Ho. You are famed across the land as a welcoming but fierce warrior. Yet change is coming to the south. My life and legacy seeps into these mountains and valleys. This is my home and the home of all who have come to share my ideas. We have lived and fought and prospered together. The shang -Yi people too call this place home. You are kindred spirits, and together your influence reaches far. You will need their aid and more besides, for Swen Sir has declared his designs upon the south and begins to march. Liu Yao stands between you, but he cannot last. If it is Liu Yu's lands he wants, then let him have them. But should he look any further, then I will not suffer him to advance. I am the White Tiger, and these are my hunting grounds. My roar shall shatter the resolve of any foolish enough to enter my domain. There we go, a little introduction there. Uh, even here, far from the capital, chaos is spreading, Yon Bai Ho. Your lands are threatened by ambitious warlords. Their greed cannot go unpunished. Those who call the South home and others around the land sympathetic to your cause must now rally to defend a way of life in danger of vanishing forever. So they want us to capture Poyang, which is right there. The Yellow Turbans currently have it. We'll gain public order and faction support, which is all good. Um, before we get into the battle, so here's the White Tiger Confederation. And so, let's see. We start getting buffs with... Um, I believe this is stuff re about a, like a research tree, I think. I think is what that is. But yeah, so we get more powerful buffs, the more alliances and coalitions we have. So we're going to want to try and do that. If you go into the court, we start with an underling, which is basically just an administrator of a territory. So let's just throw somebody in here real quick. Um... Let's throw Zhou Bo, because he gives less construction costs here. I'll say confirm. We only have one commander right now, so it's going to be this one. There we go. So that is done. Now, what's also pretty cool is that the... Um, I, believe this, I believe this is for everybody. I've only played as the bandits in this new DLC, but I believe it's for everybody. So the small towns now have side buildings that you can build in them. Um, so this is where our unique building comes into play. The Shan Yue camp is a side building of a small settlement. So this will give us more food production and, a, uh, let's see, minus one percent cost of establishing tribes and tradition connections. Now again, I think those connections are in here in their research tree. This is the Bandit Network. This is their research tree. And each one of these things will give us an additional unit that we can recruit. Um, some of our units are capped, uh, like what right there. These guys are bronze swordsmen. And so we are currently have a unit cap, and if we grab these blades of the Yu Yue, we will be able to recruit two more, so it's kind of an interesting take on the uh, tree here. What do I want to do? So this is what we start with. Minus 10% recruitment cost for melee infantry and more income from banditry. If we um, reach out to the bandits down here, the pirates of Fuchun, they will grant us more trade influence and more income from banditry and also unlocks crossbows. We can get two of those. Over here would be spearmen. And lower the cost for spears, increase the damage for spears. Uh, let's see, damage for spears. Okay. More loot when raiding enemy territory. Right, so we can raid now. Um, and we can actually share our loot. So instead of like the military... Uh, well, you know, I'll show you that in a moment. Let's see, upkeep for sword and shield infantry. Income from industry. Hmm, and this gives us a cav unit. Decisions, decisions... Hmm. Hmm. Let's uh, let's contact the children of the Yang Yui. Research that. Six turns. Okay. All right. So that is done. Um, back home here. Let us build 
Food is always important, but what else do we got? We have the Mushroom Grounds, which grants us 10 prestige, lowers the redeployment cost, but also grants minus 5 public order to adjacent enemy commanderies and gives us additional replenishment here. The prepar preparatory, ca preparatory Camp, uh, more research and prestige there. Also, plus 1 cover gain for our spies. Food tents um, adds to population growth and public order, gives us more loot, which is kind of our military supplies for the bandits, and also adds prestige. And the black market just gives us straight up money, bonus to money, and prestige. Hmm. Hmm. Also, the Shan Yue camp adds one more additional UA tribesman that we can recruit. So it's like a base experiment unit. Hmm. I guess we'll probably just grab that. So we'll add that to the lumber yard. So this is a pretty cool feature. I like that they're expanding on the small towns, giving you more options. More options is always a great thing. And then we have our army here, Big Yan Welcome and Little Yan. Both looking pretty cool. Their units here, we got Bandit Warriors, which is going to be one of our basic infantry. They are duelists. Or not duelists, but they're dual wielding, I should say. They also have the Raider trait. They can stalk wherever they go, so that's going to be very useful. Um, the UA Remnant Warriors are clad in bronze armor and weapons, which is pretty cool. They're also dual wielders, aggressive, uh, more heavily armored than our bandit soldiers are, though. And then here's some of those UA Tribesmen, just base experiment. Nothing too crazy with them besides that they're raiders. Resistance to fatigue is actually pretty cool, though, too. That's neat. And then a bandit gang, basic spear and shield infantry, also resistant to fatigue, but kind of low morale there. 27 morale is, is, uh, is not very high. But we got some yellow turbans, let's go my people. and fight these guys. So I believe, yeah, so they're actually going to get reinforcements from the local town as well. My life is in these lands, and there are none who will take that from me. No fight, no matter how insignificant, is beneath my attention. I will defend our homes against any threats. Those for the North look upon the South as theirs to claim, but they will soon know that the White Tiger is here, protecting his people. Any who intrude will face my savage claws. He has a theme going. I'm glad they're adding more units to the South, because the South is very barren. So I'm glad that these are here. Alright, so we also start with a cool Poison Volley. We have four charges of this. The Poison Volley works kind of like um, Gong Ning's arrow, like the Volley Fire, which is just a bunch, it's like a machine gun fire of uh, arrows, so it's very, very useful. And then our little brother comes with Mending, which will grant us armor, evasion, and also heals. Can only target generals, though. So basically, set up so that you will be healing, you know, Yan Baiko, or I believe he can heal himself. He could probably heal himself. Um. Yeah, so we have some guerrilla deployment and stalking options. We got reinforcements coming from over here. Let's just go and deploy this way. Let's do... Also, the um, UA Remnant Warriors here, they have an encouraging aura, which is why you see the circle when I have them selected. So they're a good morale buffer. But let's just put these guys over here with their leader, Yan. Big Yan, as I call him. Dual building as well. Looks pretty cool. So they'll be over here, let's say group one. And then little Yan will come up with the spears. I guess I can do a close-up of the actual units here. So the um, new spearman here, U UA tribesman. It, it's just a spear unit. Uh, bandit gang, kind of remnant of yellow turban design, but their colors are white instead of yellow. In fact, I think they're exactly like yellow turbans, I believe. Bandit Warrior, same thing, kind of like yellow turbans, but white instead of yellow. And then here's the bronze swordsman. So yeah. Yan Bahu seems quite well designed, I like the white cord. Yeah, yeah, no, his, his character model is pretty sweet. Alright, so we will start battle, let's move up little Yan. All these units have stall currently, so they can't see us. Enemy reinforcements are arriving. And we will fast forward. Because uh, Little Brother needs to move up a little bit. Little Yan sounds like a rapper's name. Well, I mean, that's not his real name. I just I call him Little Yan because he's a little brother. Little Yan and, and Big Yan. I forget how far Stalk actually works. 
Iron Age is better than Bronze Age. It, it is. It is. That's why they are called Remnant Warriors, because they are from the old school. Uh, we're going to decline duels for right now. And you know what? Hold on. Let's. They're also slower because they're they're um, wearing that bronze armor. So let's try and get them behind the enemy units. I'm probably gonna start this with opening up a volley of poison. Move up. You will try, and you will die. Who do you think you are? Pretty good damage. Let's also now disable melee mode and hit this guy with our arrows. As we charge their formation. Move up, move up, move up. Lil Yan, go after the yellow turban. Melee mode back engaged because you're in um, well, you're melee. You want to try and get into their archers? Send up our bandit warriors there. Get in the bronze warriors. We've already rotted their um, horses. My goodness. Jesus. These guys just crumbled. Get them, little Jan. Poison arrows up in eight seconds. Let's try and get in position to use it. Wow, they are all already gone. Holy crap. Okay. Not as effective when we're pretty far away, but still, looks cool. So who is still remaining? Oh, okay. Can you hear yourself? Fantastic. Chase the seal turbines out of here. Uh, hello, Sun Hwakun. Welcome. You wonder if a certain warrior would be a special hero or something in this DLC? What special warrior are you talking about? Let's get Big Yon back over here. Hello, Queen. After ready. Do not relent. The commander. Get the commander. There you go. There you go. See, I forgot that he also has a unique character model, too. I'm trying to get a close up here. Stop moving for a moment. Well, he's kind of covered in blood right now, but he has like cool little. I don't, they may be lion or like tiger shoulder pads. He's got like a sack on the back. There you go, in the sun. He's got those little gourd. So that's cool. They both got unique models. Okay, Alvin. Just like that. Mending is up in 11 seconds. No other units came back. This one's still routing. All right, guys. Is he unbreakable? He is. Okay, that makes sense. We will mend Big Yan. The enemy general is Woo! They were no match. They were no match. Indeed. The Seal Serpents just crumbled. My God. Okay, that didn't physically connect, but that's fine. Cause for celebration. We will release you. That's okay. Oh my mercy. See, instead of military supplies, we get loot. 
And what's neat about the loot is that we can share our loot with a city that we own for bonuses. So I may actually, I don't normally see these loots, but. For our people. Something that I forgot to check is, is this, did the DLC reset my... No, it's not very hard, okay. I wanna see if the DLC reset my difficulty settings because it felt like they ran very easily. Like really, really easily. But Papa's I guess it's just the way it is. Right. So now we already destroyed the garrison of Poyang so we can take this for free. This victory is well earned. Um, we get 45 loot for the loot and occupy. So with their loot mechanics, it may actually be beneficial to loot and occupy. Not right now. Well, actually it may be beneficial because this isn't part of our commandery. This is part of um, a neighbor's commandery, so this probably wouldn't be a big deal to uh, loot and occupy this. Seize every valuable. We still get support from the land. A strong realm is built upon strong foundations, buildings, and establishments to foster, occupy, and employ the people. They will then, in turn, give back to society, obey you, and fight for you. So let the timbers rise in victory with them. Construct or upgrade a building in our capital. And we get a cool buff. Very cool. From the mountains to the sea. Okay, so we destroyed this basically. Um, so we're gonna have to rebuild it. This is a weaponsmith that we definitely want to keep. So we will grab that. Uh, we didn't get any level ups, but with this loot here, with this amount of loot, our campaign movement range is actually lessened because we are weighed down by all the stuff that we have. So that's kind of interesting. But for our stances, so we have this thing called Share the Spoils. So it adds 20 reserves to the local commandery, 200% food bonus from banditry buildings, uh, specifically banditry, and then it lowers our loot of this army by 45, but we also get more money from banditry in the local commandery, and we get plus 25% replenishment. So we're taking all of our loot, coming back to the commandery, and we're sharing it with the people, and the people are like, oh, we want to join up! So, like, I think that's a very cool... I think it's a very cool stance that the bandits now have. That's pretty neat. Because, like, military supplies, for the most part, which is what loot replaces here, I, like, I never did anything with them. You can mostly ignore military supplies in most games, and, and you're fine. Um, the other thing that they have is raiding. So they will be able to initiate battle from this. The campaign movement range will be lowered. Reserves is going to drop. Public order is going to drop hard. They will be winded if they go into battle, but it also generates 25 loot per turn. So they have the raiding mechanics now, which is another very cool feature. I should have looked at our ancillaries. Stone Monkey, okay, a herdsman, and Strategies of the Warring States enables guerrilla deployment for the old retinue. That's very powerful, actually. That's very powerful. Holy crap. Why does it say Earth Dragon? Win a battle where you and your allies lose 200 or less men. Enemy must have at least 8 units. I don't know what this is. What is that? That must be something. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Interesting. Um, but we are going to probably equip our little brother here. Oh, right. I forgot. There's also titles now in this game. This game is also very popular in, in China. I'm not too surprised soon because one, it is a good game, and two, it is about the romance period, um, which, you know, I obviously I don't live in China, but I assumed maybe, probably more of a bigger deal there than it is here. Um, but I'm glad to see that this game is doing well. So yeah, there are titles now. I, I totally forgot about this. So we have multiple titles, and they do different things. Um, this is very cool because in like the romance of the Three Kingdoms games made by. Koei, I believe. There's like a whole title system. It's it's pretty cool. Anyway, so Earth Dragon. Oh, is this what we got? So that's what this was. So we earned the title Earth Dragon because of our um, battle. Okay, so this will give us plus 15 authority as the character's salary, but it does reduce their penalty for desire for higher office, and they become immune to scaring for his entire retinue. 
Sweet. Um, 15 authority, I don't think we're going to need on my little brother. The immune to scaring is also very neat. Hmm, okay. So what else do we got here? Chief of Wreckers, just add satisfaction. Okay, so this is just going to be a bunch of satisfaction. 40 satisfaction. Even Lu Bu would be happy. So that's all satisfaction. Hmm. So these do specific things. Have a projected income of 3,000 or more at the start of your turn. That shouldn't be too hard to get. At the start of your turn, have 10 non-aggression military access or trade agreements. We can do the Master of Writing, which adds cunning satisfaction. Like, this is great. It's such a small thing. It's just this little menu off to the side. But, like, it further customizes all of your characters. And that's great because that's what this game really focuses on. So we got, like, a whole bunch of stuff here. whole bunch of stuff here. Do I want to actually give a title to my little brother? General of the Left grants Resolve, which he is a champion. Satisfaction and recruitment costs for this entire army. I may make him a General of the Left. It does give him 100 more gold, though. General of the Right would be the commander version of this. Yeah, let's make him General of the Left. Yan Yu, General of the Left. Hello, Mango. Hello, Ruckdug. Is it a buff? Oh, yeah. For sure it's a buff. Uh, but we also want to grant him the strategies of the warring states because with this both him and his big brother's retinues will be able to deploy in guerrilla deployments and that seems pretty powerful though he doesn't need the cunning but still that's, that's pretty cool uh we don't need much formation quite yet but we will still do this because of resolve resolve up to 140 so he's very very tanky like it I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. And then weapons, we got a family spirit. Let's give that to him. Not really champion focused, because it's expertise and instinct, but it still does more damage than his basic spear. So that's pretty neat. Um, and then recruiting. Probably want the strategist, I think. Although he doesn't get along with Big Yon. So maybe we don't have a strategist. Oh wait, Pon Lin does. Okay. We will recruit this Pon Lin. There is cunning. Caution. Although we only have 18 gold right now. 18 gold. How much money are we making through banditry in this place? 60 right now. Very, very, very low. Very low. Hello, Roland. So next, what we want to do before this turn is over is we want to start thinking about coalitions. So let's go to diplomacy. Also, trade deals would be pretty cool, too. Is there any trade agreements? Yes, with three different people. So Liu Yao is our neighbor up here. Um, Wang Long, I think, is to our north. No, that's Zugong. Wang Long is to our east. And then Zugong is to our north. We get the most money with Liu Yao because he has the most resources available. I'm going to negotiate with you because Take a seat. I want a coalition. I'm also okay with the military alliance if you want that. Nope. Okay, he doesn't want that. Coalition? Minus 11.2. I could... I'm not going to offer a marriage because we'd have to give away my little brother. That doesn't make sense. But do you want to marry off your daughter? No, he is against that idea. Hmm. Okay. That's going to be a little hard to get unless I'm willing to give him some of our ancillaries that we just equipped. Do I have anything else free? What about the stone monkey, the stone pig? Because this is part of our mechanics. We want coalitions. Like, it's kind of a, a big deal for us. So if I give you all of this... There we go. Give him three ancillaries. We join into a coalition with Liu Yao. And we use him as a buffer to the north, I think. Because uh, Swansei is right here-ish. And he is a vassal to Yuan Shu, who is right around this area. Um, in this start, he is a vassal. Not in the 190 start. So that's also new. Uh, we could also get a little something from this. Just a, just a little something something. Request payment? Okay, we're not going to get a little something something. He would not even give us a nickel. <laughs> um, hello, Scorn. What's a big yawn? This guy, big yawn. Yawn by hole. Very well. I, I, I only call him big yawn because he has a little brother in his faction, and I call him little yawn. Little yawn, big yawn. 
All right, so we got a coalition, so that's cool. Non-aggression packs? Kwa Jin to our south? I think that's okay. Let us talk strategies. Positive 2.1? Okay. You want to give me some money for this? I'll take anything. We'll give him a little bit on this deal. So we'll get 200 gold from this. A reasonable offer. I, I don't I know it. Uh, Lu Kong. I don't know where Lu Kong is. I'm guessing up here. Wounds are healed by he really likes words. this. Do you have any ancillaries? He does. He does. I will need a book for our strategist. Hmm, that's an expensive book, though. Okay, I don't need that much. Let's just go for request payment. How much can I get from you? You just got done with a battle against a spider? Was it a heroic battle? I will take the money. Thank you very much. We accept. Hello, kitty. This isn't Call of Duty. Why would it be... Okay, then other non-aggression packs are maybes, which most likely mean no. Uh, not We're not going to make use of the yellow turbans. Oh, we can actually do military access with some people. Zua Li. Right now, I'm trying to stack these because I'm trying to unlock one of those titles. Because we needed, what was it, 10 either non-aggressions, military access, or allies, I think, was it? No, trade agreements. In total, and then we can unlock another title. Welcome. Take a seat. So he is right up here. I am looking to expand to the south, which is why I'm cool with making buddy buddies with everybody around me. And again, we will request a little bit of money. I am a bandit after all. Listen, gotta feed my people. I will take that. Thank you very much. This we accept. Everyone loves us. Um, we already have a deal with you. Do we got a deal with you? Yeah, non-aggression packs. Um, eh, we'll keep that. Okay. So that's fine. Support vassal independence. No. Uh, Li Zhu is a general up here who served Dong Zhuo. But at this point, Dong Zhuo is dead. So this guy kind of replaces Dong Zhuo. So he's also new. Okay. So I think that's all we're going to get here. So now we're in a coalition with Liu Yao. Oh, one thing we can also check is if anyone else wants to join our coalition. I don't think we can see that from this, though. So, people around us, let's say Hua Zin. Hello, buddy. Welcome. Come in. Uh, you cannot propose this whilst one of your faction is a vassal. Oh, you're a vassal to Liu Yao. Oh, okay, so I can't... Yeah, we can't do that anyway. How about Wang Ling? Who goes first? Nope, everyone is against this idea. We want everybody in this. We're like, um... Enter we're like Liu Bei. We just want friends. Oh, Liu Yao doesn't like this idea. Liu Kang does, or Liu Kong does. Shoot. I don't know if I can do anything to influence their relationship to make them happier with each other. Okay. All right. So I think that's all the diplomacy we'll do this turn. This is just the first turn, too. But now we have one diplomatic treaty. Fantastic. We're on our way. Did I do my trades? I did. We trading with uh with a uh, Liu Yao? Yeah, Yao. We only have one trade deal right now. Yang Fong declares war on Li Zhue. Independence declared from Li Zhue. Okay, so he was a vassal. So that's up around the capital, uh, Liu Yang. That's where, that's where all there that's happening. No um, so now that we actually have this built up, we can build a side building here as well. I think we should probably focus on our main area first, though, probably? Um, also, that's where we're going to have most of our population, so let's move up here we for replenishment leave. rate. It's most likely better. What is our population here, anyway? 
Um, 16k? Oh boy, that's very small. That is, that is, that is very, very small. Alright, so we can build this building called Bandits, which gives us some bandit income. And what's also pretty cool is that it lowers public order of enemy commanderies. Because I guess, you know, we're sending bandits out to harass them and get the money from them. So that's pretty neat. Administration office here gives us research rate, but also gives us more corruption. A tribute hall lowers construction costs and gives us more battle loot. Um, so that's a stackable bonus there. Hmm. For right now, let's go for the bandit building. I feel like. It's probably the best. We're not so awesome. making that much money. These guys started with bandit hunters, which are just raiders and simple archers. Um, so the thing is, we have guerrilla deployment with them now, but these are not stalking, so we gotta have to be careful with these guys. Oh. Oh, there's our white tiger warriors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you probably want to recruit those under, under Big Yon. They ignore ground type. Oh, so they can rush across rivers and, and water. They also scare... They do not have stock, though. Oh, also, I forgot. Um, these guys have some unique traits as well in their skill trees. Like unpredictability, which is what enables them to have guerrilla deployments and lowers enemy morale in local county. He also came with precision, which ranges... Or, sorry, which increases ranged armor-piercing damage for his whole army and also ranged firing rate when he's commanding, which he is right now. And then there's his poison volley. Ruthlessness is what gives his retinue poison arrows, right? Because that's new too. Um, it also range, um, increases range damage. So, because of this trait, I kind of want to give him... Do the White Tiger Raiders, do they have stalk? I think they do. They do. So, he pairs well with these White Tiger Raiders. So, poison in, in this game, I think works like it does kind of Warhammer where it lowers the enemy's stats. So, it's pretty cool. So let's grab one of you here in his retinue because it's, that's how we get poison arrows. I answer, my lord. Do you also have that? You do ruthlessness over here, but you started way down here with villainy, which on the oh I forgot the assignments right because now we have offensive assignments, which we'll look at here in a moment. But there's also chance of ambushing goes up and evading ambushing, which is great. Hello, Volgrim, how's it going? Hello, hello. Do we beat the big bad? Hello, Akon. Yes, we did. So that's pretty sweet. And he comes with stalk. Which... Oh, neat! So, he has a 50 meter area of effect of melee evasion and range resistance, as well as snipe. So snipe, I believe it works the same way as it does in Warhammer. It's not saying here. But snipe should be, people can fire their arrows without revealing themselves. Is what that should be in this game. But, it's only enabled if he's in a forest. Nature's decay. So that promotes us deploying around forests and taking advantage of that. That's pretty neat, too. Hmm, a lot of new little toys here. We can also think about titles. If there's any titles you want to give to Pan Lin, he doesn't necessarily need any satisfaction. And that's what all of these basic titles are. This is just satisfaction. So we would want something more unique. This would go to a commander, so not him. And we haven't unlocked anything else quite yet. So I don't think we're going to do that. We do have a bow. I would give him a bow. Uh, I'm not going to give him that. That doesn't really do much. But cool. Uh, so for more recruitments, we now have only 529 gold. Not that much. Also, these white tigers, man, they have pretty cheap upkeep. The morale isn't that great, but pretty cool. Mm. Hmm. 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 Give crossbows. Hmm. Probably just get another one of the UA tribesmen. Because the thing is, like, the bandit gang, they do have missile block chance, but their morale is just so bad. So bad. So let's get another one of the UA spearmen. We have two upkeep. Oh my god, we're going to have to go try and take some stuff out. Um, also, let's do share the spoils. It's not going to give us that much money, though. You know, we'll wait for a turn. Because we are building this, which will give us another base 50 bandit income. So we'll share the spoils on that, Prox. 
I do need more money in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we need is a mercenary contract. And we need someone to pay us to do their dirty work. Excellent, excellent. Whilst you are a powerful warrior, you alone cannot hold back the tide. You must have other fighters prepared to battle for you and with you. To that end, you must drive up recruitment, rather the loyal and the able to the cause, and press them into service. We need 17 units. We currently have 15. We have 24 turns. Um, so yeah, assignments. I should have done this at the end of the turn. So, we only have one dude currently available, but they have assignments that they, that they do at home, and then they have assignments that they do somewhere else, like Scout Province. So this is a foreign assignment that may only be targeted on sentiments that do not belong to you. So... Let's target an enemy commandery, like this one, which we're going to probably be taking. So we can send Huang Long here to go scout, which gives you entire visibility over the county and surrounding area, which is pretty cool. But it's a county, not a commandery. So the county is the area specific to that one um, area there. It's not the entirety of the commandery, I don't believe, because counties and commanders are different. Um, if we had an undercover network, we could do that, and then we can also incite rest, unrest, so we can lower the public order by a minus 10. So we can team this up with our new raiding stance and give an enemy commandery minus 28 public order, which is a huge debuff, even for the AI, which gets crazy buffs. So that's also pretty cool. Uh, but let's see, over at home, we can also make him do, let's see, what can we make him do? Mustering turns, no. Minus 10 loot and enemy armies for local commandery. Eh. No, I think we'll send him offensively. So we definitely want to attack the yellow turbans. So let's send him out here and we'll just do scout, I think. I think so. Oh, this costs 100 gold per turn. Oh. There's also a character capture chance. Oh. Okay, I don't have that kind of money. So what you're going to do is level up by doing bandit patrols. Even though I don't think that's going to do anything, really. Hello, Minus. Episodes 4 and 5 are missing from the YouTube tile playlist, and 6 is listed two times. Oh, that's weird. Incense Master. What is this? This would do recruitment costs lowered faction-wide. Oh, man. I should have done that before we recruited. I didn't know this was going to unlock so quick. We have an incense master. And I think that's going to mostly do it. Oh! Our treasury. Fight for peace. Oh, no. Um, What if we share the spoils? This is the first time. Click on the army, please. Forever there we go. Striving. Aha! So we will spend some of our loot to uh, maintain positive income. God, we have no money. Uh, Liu Yao requests your aid. While the North has been ravaged by war, the South has been a haven for refugees, exiles, and those seeking to avoid the heavy hand of the Imperial Court. But this peace is now broken. You receive an emissary from the local Han representative, Liu Yao. He is currently under attack by Yuan Shu's vassal uh, Swansei and seeks your aid. Liu Yao is a stern figure who has shown little tolerance for your less than legal ways. If he is asking you for help, he must be desperate indeed. Hello, Boo. So we can join Liu Yao, which declares war with us against Swansei. We get 3,000 gold, and it lowers our retinue upkeep and character salary for five turns. I, I think we're going to do that because this seems to be like where the story is edging us towards. We will bond together to save the South. Because I need that money. Alright, so that's for five turns. We're now at War with Swansei. Ooh, we got an exclusive weapon. Because of uh, Po Yang. What did we grab? Kindred Jian. Okay, so we got that waiting for us. Some new characters. Uh, we do not need to share the loot anymore. So let's do normal stance. Hmm... Um, actually, we could do another turn, because I want to try and take this lumber yard. What's the quickest way over there? Ah, okay, through here. Interesting. But that isn't Poyang. I want to be... Uh, let's go this route. Well, exactly where am I... It's kind of hard to see. Where am I ending my turn here? Oh, I see. Right there. Okay. 
I want to say within our um, commandery. No, 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 no. <clears throat> Let prosperity reign. It's fine. We can still share the loot here and get plus twenty five percent replenishment. But I really wanted to do the share the loot over here in our main commandery. I misclicked. It's my bad. Um. So what is this? Oh, this is so we can just change this to another thing if you want to. Nah, I'm cool. We'll, we'll keep it there. Number yard gives us food production banditry. Very important. It's a banditry, not peasantry. And income pe banditry. Ye probably. Although this will give us an additional 25. And the land registry office just straight up gives us farming and peasantry. We're looking for banditry focused stuff. So let's upgrade our bandit hideout. And now also we got the white tiger bond, which lowers the cost of establishing outlaws and outcast connections, clandestine and corrupt connections, faith and folly connections. Hold on. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Something that I did not notice is that each one of the colors here has, has a specific name. So the red are the outlaws and outcasts. The purple is faith and folly. Green is tribes and tradition. Okay. It's weird that they have them separated by that name. Because, like, this list of buffs, you're like, oh my god, that's a lot of buffs. But really, it's just, yo, your research is faster. <laughs> but it is interesting, though, because each one is different amounts. Like, the biggest one is tribes and traditions gets the biggest uh, buff there. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? Poyang. Oh, yes. So we can build a side building here. Probably... What does this do? Oh, interesting. This also grants wooden stakes as a pre-battle deployment. And gives us money from banditry, too. Neat. Black Market could give us banditry and boost banditry. In fact, maybe... Maybe we even want to change... Ah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I love these little side buildings, man. I love these side buildings. It may have been best to build the food tent first to try and get our population up in our main place. But here we are. We could also just put another Shan Yue camp to get another spearman. Mm. Like, all of these are very good. I'm going to just go for black market right now because our money situation is not great. Have I thought about investing in stocks for extra funds? Not in this market. Oh, we had another trade agreement? Oh, fantastic. Uh, negotiate. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I guess we did. We have two. I thought we only had one. Fantastic. Yes. Great. We Welcome aboard, Wong. Hello, Illu. Lubu flees to Liu Bei. Defeated, Lubu seeks sanctuary in the court of Liu Bei. He has been granted amnesty for now, but we shall see how long this clemency lasts. I mean, it's Lubu. My doubt, I, I highly doubt he's just going to stay in Liu Bei's court. Because it's, it's Lubu. Oh, my people. oh, we have low loot. Okay, turn that off, turn that off, turn that off. Stance normal. Be ready. So having low loot, oh, it lowers our satisfaction of the officers. But, also lowers public order. But it also enables scare when attacking on the campaign map and also gives us more campaign movement range. This is so cool. This is so cool. So when you have low loot, our bandits are like eager for battle, so they're more like bloodthirsty, which is why they have scare. And they really want to go find more loot, so it increases the campaign movement range. And when we have high loot... We have lower campaign movement range because we're just waiting. Our all of our wagons are loot heavy. That's really cool. Um, so we're going to move into we the enemy territory, and I think what we're going to do is raid. Lowers their public order and reserves. We will be fatigued. The enemy army can't catch us Mother this tribes. turn, but this also gives us twenty-five loot. Seize what you must. Yes. Very cool. Uh, hello, Ty. We do have enough money to upgrade this. We probably should. The weapon craftsmen are very good. And then... If you upgrade this fortress, 
We gain another Spearman and the Bronze Warriors, as well as upgrading the food and lowering the cost of tribes and tradition connections. Man, the little buildings even have little upgrade chains. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, but now I gotta ask myself, because our population here is so low, I think I may actually want to change this to food tents. Oh, so the camp, this is the only thing that has an upgrade. Everything else is just level one. Okay. Okay. I think I am going to change it right now. I, I need population here. Because I think the population... Does it also add to our bandit tree? Let me see. Migration. Bonus to income from all sources. We don't have that yet. No penalties to public order. In any case, we definitely want more people here. Lu Bu is a person of merit. Chin Gong is out there? Hold on. Yeah, Chin Gong. He's another new person added to this game. Or to this DLC. So he must have worked for Lu Bu. Chin Gong's armor. Yeah, and Lu Bu is dead. I mean, or his faction is dead. So that means he's not a spy. I should probably snag him up. Yeah. Welcome to the team, Chin Gong. Cool. Very cool. I will take that. Is there anybody worth spying on? I guess Sun Se. He has a grudge against South Sao. Well, I want you, because we're at war with Sun Se. And you're also a unique character, so I think you can go high. Deploy against Sun Se. Excellent. For our future. Anslayer's gained. We got a wooden ox. And for right now, we're just looting in the turn. So Sunsei is probably... Oh, I was about to say, Sunsei is probably going to be coming soon. And there he is. These are our terms. Yangfeng is offering us a mercenary contract for 20 turns against Li Jue. So this is odd. Because Li Jue is up around Luoyang, um, Dong Zhuo territory. So this means we would declare war against Li Jue immediately. The problem being, though, I can't reach his territory. But at the same time, it will be giving us money, so I guess we should try it out anyway. If we take this, um, Li Jue would hate us. That's goes without saying. Uh, Wang Ling would like us a little bit. I guess a productive meeting. Thank you. So yeah, now I guess we're at war against against him. People. Also, South South declared war on him too. And then there we go. We have we have a mercenary contract. You have accepted a mercenary contract against your new employer's enemies. Whether they are were old friends or foes matters not. All that accounts is the contract and the promise of pay. But more than gold is at stake. If you fail to strike the enemy within the first two years of the contract, your reputation could suffer greatly. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Uh, I did not know that, Vulgram. I haven't, I haven't played him yet. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't know about the downsides. Um, though the tyrant is dead, control of the emperor is far from settled. Li Jue and Guo Xi, two of Dong Zhuo's former generals and erstwhile allies, are the ostensible regents, but two such ambitious men could not work together for long. Mutual suspicion has escalated to paranoia, then hostility, and gangs of their supporters skirmish in the streets and alleys of Chang'an. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so... Wait, who's this? Oh, we can attack the Han Empire, though, because he currently holds them. Ah! Ah! Okay. Okay, that is something reasonable that we can do. Hear me roar. Yeah, roar, roar. Um, okay. We also have Sun Sei and Yuan Shu coming. But I need to make On sure we do this mercenary face. contract. Hmm... I know our destination. 
Garrison to Before he loses hold of the Han Empire, I need to try and attack one of these settlements. So probably Yuzhang, which is currently deserted, apparently. The tiger roars. And we will keep upgrading Poyang. And we can't do anything here. Diao Chan is a person of merit. But I don't have the money to recruit her unless I, I cancel this. She is a strategist. Ah, uh, wait. Diao Chan went to work for Yuan Shu after Lu Bu fell? If she just joined Yuan Shu, that's a spy. <laughs> nope. Sorry, Diao Chan. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Oh yeah, so we'll upgrade that again. That's a trap. Character ranks gained? Who? Oh, our administrator. Okay. What is this? Obfuscation. Enables night battles and plus three cover gain per turn when spying faction-wide. Oh, if they are a Prime Minister or a faction leader, which you are not. This could lead to Shamelessness, which grants us more post-battle loot. Plus 10 loot in enemy territory when commanding. That's neat. Uh, intensity has always been there. Restlessness, campaign movement range. But she's beautiful. She's It's, it's a trap, man. She's a spy. We'll grab this anyway, because I, I want Shamelessness. That sounds good. Uh, I will give you this ox to ensure your happiness. How new is this campaign? Um, an hour? An hour new? And turn. So we got two armies coming. Two armies are here. Here is our offer. Are Dong separatists offer us peace on behalf of the Han Empire? Rejecting will result in war? Wait, what? So they want me to declare peace in the Han Empire, but doesn't that go against my mercenary contract? Or did these... Oh, no. These now have the Han. Oh, that makes this a lot harder. Our talks are over. My mercenary contract is against that guy specifically. And now he doesn't control the Han, which means... They would only strengthen our line. Our character would join their faction? <laughs> We bide by your choice. Well, this mercenary contract is going to be damn near impossible now. Liu Yao liberated. Yeah, so this guy got the Han Empire. Oh, man. Oh, her Yi is around in this time period. The Puppet Han Emperor has been captured. So yeah, he lost the control from the Dong Separatists. Oh, man. Uh, what's this? Faction Developments, Children of the Yang Yue. Oh, so that was our research has just finished. So that sucks, because now my mercenary contract would force me to go all the way up here, which is not going to be possible. Can I get out of the contract? I doubt it. I think we just gotta ride this one out. Let me see. Welcome, friend. If we break it early, do we still incur the terrible diplomatic penalties? Because if this gives us the same penalties, then we might as well just continue to get paid for 18 turns. Or is just the payment just up front? 
it still incurs the same diplomatic penalties. Ah, okay. Would make us untrustworthy. Duration eight turns. I wonder if we should just do this right now. If we wait eight turns, we have 18 turns to do the deal. If we wait eight turns, then we wouldn't get the breaking deal penalty. Okay, I'm going to wait eight turns and see what kind of negatives we get then. Because this is a breaking the deal penalty. And it says eight turns need to go by before that is gone. I'm curious. Okay. Test it out. So Sunsei and Yuan Shu looks to be as if they are marching on my territory. I now no longer am rushed to go against the Han. So we're going to have to, I guess, go up this way. The White Tiger. And we need more people. We're going to need Cav. What do we have? Bandit Raiders. Raider Cav. Bandit Marauders. What's the Bandit Marauders? Missile resistance, 50%. Really? Damage of missile attacks is reduced by this much. And they also have a block chance of 20%. But they're dual-wielding mallets? That's pretty hardcore. Okay. Their upkeep is 100, though. But we will need some kind of cav. Sure. Shorter days, higher spirits. Sure. And then let's grab. If you have guerrilla deployment, I don't know if we necessarily will need the trebs up front. Let's just grab archers, I guess. Because we have two armies marching at us right now. Aren't they at war with Glad with you? See you? They are. He's at war with Sunsei, but it looks like Sunsei is straight up ignoring his fishing port. And judging by what Yuan Shu is doing, I think they're going to march around this mountain and come up this road to attack me instead. <laughs> huh. Interesting. And this guy leveled up. Uh, shamelessness. I do like that. All of the melee cap got missile resistance buffs to make shock cap less of a no-brainer. Ah, okay. Because, yeah, that was the thing. It, shock cap was like, why go anything else? Okay, what can we grab next? Pirates of Fuchun, trade influence. Mm, we have two trade deals. I don't know. What's down here? Ch uh, charge bonus for spear infantry, and we get more UA spears. More loot when raiding enemy territory. Damage for all melee infantry and morale for spears goes up. This gives us more shock. Which leads to a upkeep lower of infantry. For spears, specifically. Upkeep spy for or upkeep cost for spies. More money from commerce and industry and plus one spy position. We don't really need that. But it does give us a Xi'an sword guard. Which is interesting. And then the Changsha Coalition, one available army, more armor for spears, gives us access to a. What is that? G. Not militia. It's the next level up, it looks like. This gives us another trade agreement. Trade agreement early on is easy money. Oh man, population growth. Oh my god, there's so many options. I think I want to grab the trade agreement. We're going to talk to the smugglers of Han Shen. Yes. And then this shows us our controlled territory. Oh, each controlled region in the commandery increases the rate of establishing local connections. What? Local connections? 
Oh, so... Okay, so, like, if we don't research these right now, and we instead take these commanderies later and then research them, they should research faster. Okay. Well, that's interesting. That is interesting. And pretty cool. Okay. Neat. Very neat. What else do you want to do this turn? Mm, probably nothing. We just got to get in position for these two armies. I don't know what I'm going to do. 